lot of uh, companies, executives, they think, you know, cybersecurity is a concern for, for just big companies. Uh, what's your opinion, Bob? Like, should companies big and small both both uh, have uh, cybersecurity strategies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you just think about it from a logical standpoint, um, Sylvia kind of alluded to it with the um, fire extinguisher analogy. Um, if you go through and you can identify uh, what the risks are to your business, because they're they're going to vary in um, uh, the predictability of them happening as well as the probability of them happening. Um, and if you can walk through that with your counterparts, um, I'll give you an example uh, in PR at Blizzard, we went through all of the possible scenarios, figured out um, uh, what the probability of each of them happening. And for the top, uh, I don't know, uh, five or so, we actually uh, went through an exercise and said, okay, this just happened um, and let's go through the exercise. What would we, what would we do in PR, for example? And we actually had a, uh, a whole bunch of pre-canned uh, PR releases. Um, they'd have to be, you know, scrubbed and, and doctored. But the point is, and getting back to the, you know, your question, if you're prepared um, in a crisis situation like that, where chaos kind of takes over, uh, the, the people that have taken a look at it and said, what are we going to do in that situation and prepared are going to come out uh, much, much better than the ones that fly by the seat of their pants. You know, Henry, uh, to add to Bob's, because uh, I really think that's insightful. Um, one thing to consider that I don't know if small companies to large companies have an enterprise risk management plan. And in that risk management, you might want to include cyber risks. And that, therefore, you have visibility into what the remediation or what the plan is for each one of those risks. And that's, that's how we do it. Um, you know, it becomes, uh, you know, where the, the highest risk certainly gets a lot of attention, but it does put some formality to what's, what's the risk for the enterprise. I would add one thing to that, Henry, and that is that, you know, Bob mentions having those different scenarios identified. A key aspect of the next step is that you have identified who is going to do what and in what order. And that includes internal partners as well as external partners. You might be a small firm and you have a, your, all your communications handled internally, or you might have a PR firm, a communications firm, a digital firm, and everybody has to know what their role is, what content they're supposed to get out, and um, with some doctoring, obviously, based on the exact situation. But that's a key part of it, so that you can respond in hours or even in minutes. Mm -hmm. Great. If I may add to that, it's also you know the availability of people. There has to be a backup for every person, and. Unfortunately, some of these things ha happen on Saturday and Sundays, and you have to have people available to contact people and to get people back into mm. the office or online to help. And that's where the team has to know who's doing what and everybody has to have a backup. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad for the people involved in that on a Sunday. <laughs> Well, usually um, if it's a targeted attack, um, the targeted attack is gonna happen after business hours. We've had um, uh, at a couple places that I've worked, we've had an advanced uh, persistent threat and the activity happened well after hours. So it wasn't uh, actually observed. Wow. So that is, that is a good point and very probable that it'll happen off hours. <laughs>